Welcome back to Star or Shovel Worm, my name's Luke and today on the channel we're going to be taking a look at Wright and this one is one that's definitely going to appeal to fans of Super Meat Boy, Celeste and any of those other hard as nail platformers which make most people want to snap the switch in half and go and watch some great British bake off to calm down. The gameplay however is kept very simple in this one so it's easy to pick up and play but hard to master. So let's take a look at what the game has to offer and don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy my content and want to see more. So there's really nothing to talk about in the way of a storyline with this one besides the mention of a rite of passage and someone called the Nim, which I suppose is the race of the little guy that we play as, and so we're going to be skipping straight to the gameplay. Now unlike SMB or Celeste, there's no fancy level system to be had or animations, and instead we get a menu featuring 5 different level sets, each containing around 30 levels, and these must be completed in order. So there's no skipping levels in the game which can potentially cause a lot of frustration when you get into the tougher ones. Thankfully, things start off relatively tame though, and the introductory levels take you through the basics, teaching you how to jump, perform wall jumps and every few levels a new hazard is introduced, which as you'll soon see are pretty self-explanatory. The controls though are incredibly tight, jumping feels solid with longer jumps performed by holding the button whilst a tap will perform shorter jumps, and I mention these specifically because later in the game the amount of power you need to put into your jumps really matters. When it comes to the wall jumping your character will cling to the surface for a moment before sliding down it, and again the sliding aspect of this comes into play in plenty of the levels, as does controlling your character's movement whilst in the air. Now the primary objective in levels is to collect the large golden cog looking thing, at which point the exit door will open, and then all you need to do is reach this without dying, which is easier said than done, as any death causes the level to completely reset. In addition to this there are also 20 smaller golden tokens scattered about the level which are entirely optional, and while there are no difficulty settings in the game, I'd definitely say that attempting to collect all of these ramps up the challenge massively, as they're often positioned in some very tricky to reach locations. I personally focused mainly on collecting just the cogs in levels, and this alone proved to be more than enough of a challenge for me, but the additional tokens adds plenty of replay value as you're able to return to any complete level to attempt to collect them at a later date. Now when it comes to the levels themselves, each of them has been handcrafted to provide as much variety as possible, and the devs have done a great job of keeping things both interesting and challenging with the limited mechanics available. Hazards include purple thorny tendrils, spinning buzzsaws, swinging pendulum blades and rotating spiky balls, so nothing particularly complex or original. But the layouts of the levels and the positioning of these hazards is what really makes things challenging, as the devs have been very tactical and in some levels borderline cruel with them, so expect plenty of trial and error and lots of very precise jumps. Now, throughout my years of gaming I've played plenty of precision platformers, and while I wouldn't say that this is the most difficult in the genre, it definitely presents a considerable challenge, and you'll likely find that towards the end of the second level set the death count will really start climbing. I'd say that for the most part the difficulty curve was gradual and I was able to maintain my composure and progression without much issue, though like I said I was just going for the golden cogs. But despite this, I did encounter a few levels where the difficulty spiked, usually due to a specific type of jump that I just couldn't master, and it's at these points where I was definitely left wishing for a level skip as they halted my progression for about 20 or 30 minutes, and I really just wanted to move on and come back to them. Now I do have a confession to make, as many of you will have heard me say on plenty of occasions, I'm absolutely shit at platformers, especially rage inducing ones like this, and usually my head goes after about 30 minutes of playing, so I'm going to admit right now that I didn't end up finishing this one. 
I did however make it to the third level set before getting stuck on this absolute shit of a level where you have to do repeated wall slides and avoid those purple spiky bastards, so I'm actually quite proud of that achievement. But for that reason I think that it's only appropriate that I don't give a scored rating for the game. What I will say though is that I was incredibly impressed by how well put together levels fell, and at no point did I feel like I've done this before or, or it's this thing again. The developers have really tried to keep the variety up by introducing both subtle changes and completely unique level layouts to consistently challenge your platforming skills, and all in all I'd say they've done a fantastic job at keeping things both incredibly simple, whilst also managing to successfully compete with the likes of Super Meat Boy and Celeste when it comes to the level of difficulty. As a final mention, both of those games are well known for the speedrunning communities, and if you are a speedrunner you'll be glad to hear that Riot also includes an in-game timer and individual time recordings for each level, so we may just see this one appearing at the next AGDQ. Overall though I thought it was a great little precision platformer. It's simple and could have maybe done with a couple more mechanics, or maybe some additional difficulty levels to cater to the real masochists out there, but if you're a fan of the genre, or looking to take your first steps in it, then I highly recommend giving Wright a go. So visually, I wouldn't say that Wright has the best sprite work I've seen, the main protagonist is nowhere near as memorable as Meat Boy or Celeste, and everything is kept relatively simple, with levels having a kind of ancient temple-like aesthetic to them, with blocks featuring various patterns, but I actually think that this was very strategical and a clever design choice by the developers, as you can actually use the lines of these blocks to time your jumps. There is a little bit of visual variety, with each level set featuring a different colour scheme alongside the block variety, but overall not too much going on in the graphics department. When it comes to sound design we get a few simple sound effects for the jumps and token collections as well as your deaths which all sound fine, and the music is pretty enjoyable. It generally has a nice upbeat feel to it and isn't overly hectic, allowing you to just zone out and focus on the gameplay, so all in all not bad stuff on the audio and visual front. So when all is said and done, I think Wright is one of those games which is looking to appeal to both long term fans of the genre, as well as those looking to take the first steps in it, as it's not ridiculously difficult, but it's certainly challenging enough to spike that rage meter, especially when going for all those additional tokens. What I will say though is that it could definitely do with a couple more accessibility options, even if that was something as simple as a level skip after a certain amount of deaths, or perhaps an easy mode setting which has a checkpoint system but doesn't record your timings, as getting stuck on the same level for 20 or 30 minutes can really test your patience. The controls and mechanics though are as solid as they are simple, and you'll have no trouble picking up the basics after only a few minutes of playing. Whether or not you make it to the end though is another matter, but you'll find plenty of variety along the way to keep you hooked. All in all, a great job by the developers and an awesome little precision platformer. And so that just about wraps things up for this review of Wright on the Nintendo Switch. So are you a fan of Super Meat Boy or Celeste, or any other hardcore precision platformers? Let me know what your favourites are and what you thought of this game down in the comments section below. As always, if you enjoyed this review make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel for more reviews as well as reviews of some terrible Switch games, and as always, thanks once again for watching, take care of yourselves, and game on.